Hi guys! Are you looking to enhance your security system with the high power PDZ camera, but not sure how to set up? Now, with the right tool and knowledge, installing a PDZ camera can be a breeze. Today, we are going to set up a long range PoE for a high power PDZ camera at 300 meter distance. So, let's take control of your security and learn how to install. And if you have any trouble with your system design, please feel free to contact us through the link down in the description box below, and we'll be more than happy to solve your problem for you. And please like and subscribe our channel, Fast Cabling. Today, we are going to use the PoE to power up our PTZ camera. PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet. It enables power and data both transmitted over a single Ethernet cable and eliminating the needs for a separate power set. Now, there are different power standards IEEE 802.3AF, AT, and BT standard. Since we are using high power PoE, that is the BT standard. BT standard is the highest power standard for PoE, allowing it for transmission up to 90 watts of power and used up all four twisted pairs of the wire in the Ethernet cable, rather than just two twisted pairs in other standard. Now, let's go over to the demonstration board and see how to set up. So now we're in front of the board and behind me is the whole setup. Now this is the PDZ camera that we're going to install. PDZ stands for pan, tilt, and zoom. It can provide high resolution video footage and offer remote control of the camera's viewing angle and zoom capability, allowing for easy monitoring of a large area. Also, this is PoE enabled. And since we're using a high power camera, so the distance will become a challenge because remember we are going to put it 300 meters away. Now the PoE has a limitation of 100 meters, that's 328 feet. Because as the length of the Ethernet cable increases, the resistance of the cable increases as well, leading to voltage drop and power loss over the Ethernet cable. And the high power devices require more power than can be reliably transmitted over a longer distance and resulting in additional power loss. And therefore, we need to add two more things to solve that problem. First is the 90 watts PoE injector. Now this injector can inject 90 watts of power through the Ethernet cable, so it will get enough power for the PDZ camera because it requires more power loss over a longer run and require higher power from the main end. That's why we need to add this at the beginning. Second is we need to add a PoE extender. So now let's begin our connection and I'll explain some more along the way. So first let's connect the main router here with the NVR. The NVR is already connected to the monitor and the video will show up later on after we connect it with the camera. And then I'm going to use a short patch cord to connect with our 90 watts PoE injector. Make sure you put in the right one. We have the data input port here and the PoE output port. I'm going to plug it into the, PoE, the data input port here with the router. You can see the indicator light is on. I already plugged in the AC adapter. Now I'm going to use another cord to plug in with the PoE output port with our PoE extender. Now, why do we need the PoE extender? Because the PoE extender can extend the reach of the PoE technology. It works by receiving both power and data from the PoE injector or PoE switch through an Ethernet cable and then boost up the power and retransmit it over the second Ethernet cable to the end device. Now in the common way, normally we add 100 meter with one PoE extender. If you have 200 meter, you have to add two extender. But today we're connecting with 300 meters Ethernet cable, but we're not using three of them. We only need two of them. That's a pair of the PoE extender and they can extend up to 
300 meter. Now, let's connect this with the Ethernet cable here, but make sure you plug it in with the output port. This is the output port. Let me plug it in. And then the input port here with the second Ethernet cable. This is a special trick. Okay. And now this is the 300 meter Ethernet cable. And let's connect with the second PoE extender. And for this side, you plug it in with the input port. And then using the output port to connect with the edge device using another short patch cord here. Make sure it's plugged in tight. And now it's getting power. And let's give it some time for the image to show up. It should, okay, already up. And you can see my hand moving here is already working. And you can see there's no external power source needed over this side. And all we have is a pair of the PoE extender and nothing else in between but a single Ethernet cable. So here are a few more tips for you. Make sure you choose a pure copper cable for a PoE connection. Copper has superior conductivity compared to other materials, so it can provide stable power delivery. Also, the PoE extender here is IP67 waterproof, so make sure you use a wrench to fasten the neck and the gland to prevent water or dust to get in, and you can even bury it under the ground. But with this method, you don't have to because you can put the PoE extender by your edge device and by your switch or injector. And make sure you put it input port facing the input port. Also, it has plug and play feature, so it doesn't require any complicated configuration and provide fast networking up to 100 bit per second data trans transfer rates. Now, it is also compatible with IEEE AO 2.3 AF, AT, and BT standard and provide up to 60 watts of power. That's why it can work with the 90 watt PoE injector. Now, if you want to add multiple devices, you can use a long range PoE switch. And here's the video on how to install multiple IP cameras using the long range PoE switch. Now, thank you so much for watching us today and I will see you next time.